ton of sad people. <laughs> you know, like, is that better or worse than murder scenes? You tell me. Hey everybody, my name is Ace Fangirl, and welcome back to another episode of AI The Somnium Files. First and foremost, in the last one, forgot to apologize that we're a little bit off kilter in terms of episode numbers. Had a lot going on, it didn't get one done for last Monday, but we're back now. And hopefully no more interruptions. Anyways, oh god, in the last one we had our stopping at all of um, everybody's houses to talk to them about their dead children and or friends. It didn't go well. Nobody really told us anything, but I didn't really expect them to because they're in mourning. It was honestly maybe rude for me to even go and ask. But we at least offered some support, except Miami hates me. Same shit, different day. Uh, we talked to Mama, we talked about So in the Kawasaki district with the whole chemical plant thing, which is a plot line we have not picked up on in a while. Uh, but maybe it could be relevant. Um, because Mama thinks the mob is definitely involved here because Shoko, Renju, and Ota, potentially, all have ties to the mob. I don't know about that because, um... They definitely have an alibi for Shoko's murder. So, like, maybe just not my branch of the mob that I know, but whatever. Um, we're figuring it out. Anyways, we're leaving now. Um, we're going to the cops. I am a cop, but... You know, it's fine. Okay, it's 4.57, almost 5. I returned to boss's office to report. Oh, she's not here. But I didn't see her anywhere. Where did she go? I don't know. Well, she isn't always here, correct? I guess not. True. I sat down in my usual seat and decided to wait for boss. Um. Hey, girl! What are you doing? You look great! I thought it would be easier to talk like this. Yeah, we should, we should debrief the two of us, probably, huh? What do we have to talk about? So much shit, Dante. A summary of the investigation, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What summary? We don't have anything new. Also super valid. That's not true. Oh, what do we got? Huh? I was curious, so I did some research. About number 89. Oh, okay. I don't know if we're gonna get any jokes. Probably not. It's probably... I mean, I was here. I'll just examine a couple things just to make sure. All right, probably nothing. You never can tell though. Sometimes I bet you I just didn't click on the exact right thing that has a joke in it, but it's fine. We'll just talk to Iva. All right, let's look at her. She's sitting on the desk. To be precise, the image of Iva sitting on the desk is being sent to my brain, obviously. Um, all right, so who is number 89? Just start there. As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. Right. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was imprisoned six years ago. Mm-hmm. That's what Pewter told us. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Okay. Um, what's his real name? Unknown. Uh, Shit. You don't know? It's probably not recorded anywhere. No such person is listed in the family registry. What, as number 89? I'm sure no one named their kid number 89. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. Oh wait, did he tell me a, did he tell me a name? I forget. However, I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Yeah, I think so too. So what about what's what's the relationship between number eighty nine and Choco? Let's just get that out of the way. Unknown. If any. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Fuchu Prison's waiting room. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, just to pursue all avenues here. Have we not considered it's weird that she was also there? I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. Because Hitomi didn't say who she was visiting. After all, Fuchu Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. Oh, I guess that's a good point. Forgot about that. Thanks to flashback. Michael killed Shoko Nadami. He did say that. That must mean that he knew her somehow. Or of her. It is possible. Okay. 
So what about number 89 in the new Cyclops serial killings? Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. Mm -hmm. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Who's dead now. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive, number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. Because he was in jail. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. So, like, what do we actually have, guys? However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. No? What do you got for me? I know who killed Shogun Adami. Oh, just that he probably, like, knows who did it? If he was telling the truth, his involvement is possible. Mm hmm That's fair. Okay, let's go talk to him. Let's talk to number 89. Wait, is he here? I don't know if he's telling the truth or he's full of it. But he's our last remaining loose end. Alright. However, we need not go to him. We can bring him to us. Oh, yeah, because that worked out really well last time. If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. We probably should. Can you arrange that? I can. Can you? After cutting through some red tape, number 89 was to be brought to HQ. Which again, worked out really well last time. Pretty sure he beat my ass. He took considerable time to arrive. But for some reason, boss never showed up. That's upsetting. Hey. Hi, Peter. Oh god, this is giving me bad flashbacks, guys. Hey. Okay, that was- that was weird. Hey, how's it going? Oh god. Oh god, it's happening. Sorry to interrupt your busy day. Damn, Date. <laughs> We're on one today. And I need you to tell me something. I'd appreciate your cooperation. I don't like how he looks at me. Please keep your eyes averted. Please look down again, thank you. No, don't look at me. Pipe? Alright. I just like looking at myself in the mirror. This room's reflected. I'm so cool. Alright, anyways. <sighs> hey, how's it going? Number 89's sitting in front of me. What's your name? Number 89. Your real name. I don't remember. Oh. Okay. Uh, where are you from? Burkina Faso. Okay, that's not true. Burkina Faso is a republic in West Africa. Population 17 million. I don't have time for your jokes. Okay. Um. Do you what? You're the original. Let's just let's just lay it all on the table. You're the original Cyclops killer, aren't you? That's right. Cool. I was one of the culprits behind the case six years ago. Uh -huh. One of the two Cyclops killers. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool of you. All right. Do you know Shogun Adami? Yes yeah, or no? I guess I do. Oh, do you? Great. About a month ago. Shoko visited Fuchu Prison. I'm assuming she was visiting you. Was she there to see you? That's right. Oh, oh, great. What did you talk about? Nothing special. Uh huh. You're in no position to lie. It could have been nothing special, Date. You don't know. I'm not lying. She didn't come to hear me talk. And why did she come? To meet me. Huh. Meet you? Is she a fan? She probably just wanted to see me. People do that. That's not that weird. Where? When did you first meet Shoko? A long time ago. Oh yeah. I don't remember exactly when. What's your relationship to her? A physical one. Hot? I'm kidding. She's oh. just a business partner. Okay. Damn. Thought we uncovered something there. Who killed Shoko Nadami? All right. 
Let's get down to business. No more jokes. Let's get right down to it. Two days ago, you called Investigation HQ and said, I know who killed Choko Nadami. That's right. Mm -hmm. So? Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. Don't like that you got your crazy eyes out. Could you put those away? You're gonna let me out of prison, right? Uh, no. It's done. You've got a deal. I can't do that. He's gonna be like, really? Not stupid. All right. Wow, really? You're buying that? I'm so not letting you out of prison. I hope you know that. But to explain it properly, I need to tell you a story. Does the story involve beating my ass? Because I've had a history with that. It might take some time. Is that all right with you? Uh, I guess. I don't know. I've got nothing but time. Then let's get started. The story of a lonely assassin. All right, settle in, everyone. Get your popcorn. Sounds like this is... Once upon a time, there was a detective full of righteous justice. Cool. Is that me? Let's I'm call not, him F. I'm not a detective. F found the evils of the world intolerable. Right. F had no parents, no siblings, and grew up in an orphanage since he was born. He suffered every kind of abuse imaginable there. It led him to despise all the evils of the world. Okay, that checks, it's fine. One day, F was chasing a thug down at the harbor. Someone wanted for the assault and murder of women. Great. We love that. Okay, I get it. I'll just throw down my knife. Here. And you lower your gun. This is him. Oh, he looks great. He looks. I like this outfit. It's fine. I got nothing else on me. Okay. I think you're lying. I'll go quietly. That doesn't seem very believable. You know, I have a history with hospitals. I've been going to a special hospital for a while. The hell does that mean? Even if I get caught, it's all good. I'll come right back out again. What should I do next time? Okay, you're really not making a great case for yourself, bud. Just thinking about it gets me excited. Why are you saying this while you're still at gunpoint? Okay, that was aggressive. That was a lot of shots. You maybe didn't need all of those. Maybe only a few. The culprit was unarmed. But F never served a day in prison. Well, yeah, you can prove that he's a bad man. So, you know, it's like, well, it's not self-defense. It's like vigilante justice, which, you know, is generally frowned upon. The case went to trial for some time, but it was determined to be self-defense. And he was declared innocent. Well, it depends, you know. Was it a jury trial? It was determined to be self-defense. He had a knife and he threw it down. If the truth got out, it would be a huge Oh, I forgot scandal he's a cop. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I take it all back. Of course this happened. People at the upper level were terrified of what might happen, so they had evidence fabricated. They probably called Manfred von Karma. F wasn't suspended or disciplined at all. After a while, he returned to his job like nothing happened. That's too real. Too real, unfortunately. That was a turning point for him. He was ready to shed the morality that was weighing him down, holding him back. See, this is what happens when you get sent the wrong message. F still wanted justice, and he was willing to dispense it to the immoral one by one. He became an assassin. A lone gunman. No agent, no employer. Now, were you still working for the cops at this time? He was his own man. F believed that he was judge, jury, and executioner. Okay. But it didn't last long. Yeah, but it didn't. One day, F got rid of a criminal we'll call X. Mm -hmm. X was responsible for defrauding and killing an innocent old man for his life insurance policy. Mm. Turns out, X had connections. Someone wasn't happy that he died. Yeah, I bet this is like connected to the Kumakuras, right? Because that's what Renji said they did. Rohan Kumakura 
chairman of the Kumakuras. X was a top executive of the Oof. Kumakuras at the time. Rohan ordered his men to find and kidnap F. I've done some research. I know you've cleaned up at least 18 pieces of scum from this earth. But somehow there hasn't been a single criminal investigation. They're all treated as suicides, accidents, or natural causes. Amazing work. I'm impressed. Thanks. How about you work for us? Uh, no. Of course, you have the right to say no. You have the right to. But it'll be the last word out of your mouth. F was trapped. Yeah, I expect he, you gotta say yes at that point. Even if he somehow survived, he would be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. He had no choice but to take Rohan's offer. Thus, F's self-employment came to an end. He became a hired gun of the Kumakuras. Rohan even gave him a code name. Falco. Mm, right. Named for the falcon, a bird of prey. I believe we've heard that name before. Falco didn't quit his job as a police officer, though. Oh, you, you were working as a cop the whole time. He worked as a detective by day, assassin by night at the will of the organization. An ordinary killer would need motive to take a life. But not Falco. He did as he was told. One target after another. It didn't take long to destroy his heart completely. Time passed, and a few years back, Falco, who by this time was exhausted in body and spirit, made a fatal mistake. He missed his mark and ended up taking a bullet to the stomach. Yikes. Somehow, he managed to escape. After reaching a nearby shrine, his legs finally gave out under him. He had no strength left. He put his back up against the shrine and let out a moaning breath that he thought might be his last. So no one ever told you a good storyteller, dude? But at that moment... Here's where it all comes together. In his darkening vision, he saw a woman approach him. He watched her take out her phone and dial for help. At the same time, he heard footsteps. Uh -oh. Footsteps of at least two people closing in. He knew immediately that they were after him. He sprung into action, grabbing the woman and pulling her close, kissing her to keep her from talking. That's called harassment, but that's fine. And by that I mean it's not fine. You shouldn't do that. You should put, her, put your hand over her mouth like a normal that person. was the first encounter between Falco and the woman. That's okay. Apparently she thought it was hot. <laughs> she was a teacher at some school. I would not think that was hot. It was like she was from a totally different world than him. Listening to her talk, he would forget everything about his line of work. She was his only contact with the ordinary, mundane world. They met in secret a few more times, and Falco felt his heart grow warmer. Her smile and kindness were like a cold glass of water for Falco's parched heart. This man's romantic. Falco started to become himself again, his former self. He swore on his life that from then on, he would live for her. That's beautiful. So, you want to go clean? Fine. Do as you please. Huh. You've done a lot for us. But there is one last thing. One final job I want you to do for me. It's nothing major. This woman and her daughter. I need you to dispose of them. Should be simple, no? 
Rohan handed Falco a picture of a woman and a girl. It was the teacher Falco met at the shrine. Oh man. And her daughter. She had just turned 12. I hate to see it. Why the two of them? Rohan, as usual, never gave a reason. And Falco had no intention of carrying out the kill. But if he didn't, he knew that someone else would. He thought long and hard. How is he going to keep them safe and get out of the life of crime? He couldn't find an answer, no matter how hard he thought. I feel like Rohan needs a bigger trigger. He was backed into a corner. So, he decided to call on an old friend for help. And then... And then what? You can't just... That was the middle of a sentence. You can't just end it there. Silence. For some reason, he wouldn't open his mouth again. Hi. Really uncool to stop right there. Especially because it was... What? Why did you stop? <laughs> Why did you stop? Oh my god. He's not gonna talk to me also. Uh, you mentioned a detective? You mentioned a detective. Okay, uh, was that the whole story? Was that the whole story? Okay, what's the connection between that and Shoko? Eh? What's the connection between that and Shoko? Shit. Okay, answer me. Hey, answer me. He's not talking. We got that far and really you're gonna stop there? This is a transaction, remember? Oh, so the next part's the important part, is what I'm hearing. Until I get a guarantee that you'll uphold your end of the bargain, I'm not telling you anything else. Dude, I can't let you out of prison. I'll give you half up front, half later. That was nice of you. <laughs> Quick, knock him out! <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of my story, you better start the release procedures. Or, hear me out. I'm gonna knock you out and put you in the stupid sink chair. Once they've cleared, I'll tell you everything. Yeah, okay, I don't believe you though. So... Date, it is unlikely that number 89 will uphold his promise, even upon release. I, well, I'm not dumb. Pewter. Yes? You know what to do. Start the preparations. For what? You mean for what? What do you think? <laughs> not releasing him from prison. The sink. Now, hopefully we were just able to, like, drug him. Okay, we were. That's fine. I have injected number 89 with the usual dosage. Rad. He will not be waking up anytime soon. Okay, good. He'd probably try and kill me. Agent Date. Yeah. The time limit is six minutes. Is it, though? I know. Then let's begin. Okay, where's boss? Not important? Okay. I miss her All right, going in. What do we expect to find in here? It's probably gonna be weird. He's an assassin. Oh, that's a ceiling fan. Oh shit! Wait, we've been here before. Sup? <laughs> Sup, girl. All right. In the next one, we're gonna sink it out with number eighty-nine. Um. I believe this one only has one root, uh, but we can do some achievement work here, so we're gonna see if we actually manage to pull it off. Um, but we'll dive in in the next one. I'll see you then.